I like to say that health is much more than what happens to you in a doctor's office. Health starts where people live, labor, learn, play, and pray. And in my view, the future of public health is linking the health sector with all sectors of society, with education, transportation, housing, and particularly business, which has not gotten the attention it needs and deserves. Talking about anchor institutions in general, uh, about anchor meds, that's anchor medical institutions. Uh, you also have heard the term anchor eds, anchor educational institutions like universities. And then I'm part of a group here at Harvard that's doing a lot of thinking about how the worlds of private business and public health can work more closely together. And we have a grant from Robert Wood Johnson Foundation on that very theme. So all those themes will be woven in. There's nothing like the COVID pandemic to remind us that health has to do with much more than the health sector alone. Health challenges affect all of society. Those themes are playing out right now. And you all now know that social determinants of health is a cutting edge theme for the future for all of us who, who care about health of populations. Today, we will start with anchor institutions having to do with health systems, anchor meds, but uh, this is just a segue and a way of learning about what we could apply to business in general going forward. So. Just to review what we understand about anchor institutions, how they're defined, you heard Dave Zuckerman say yesterday that these are large place-based establishments that invest in their surrounding communities as a way of doing business. Uh, I'm actually fascinated by the concept that these are organizations that can't move. They are really invested long-term in a certain place, have tremendous physical resources there. And if their surrounding communities don't do well, they will not do well either. So they are really intertwined with, with their community's future, whether they realize it or not. So as you've heard from the last two days, what do anchor institutions do? They can be real estate developers, they can be local purchasers, they can employ people from local communities. Uh, they really help with community wealth building and building infrastructure. Uh, they can be a cluster anchor. They can attract other anchors to join with them, including, I hope, anchor businesses. And here's some interesting findings that we got from our review about the why question. Uh, one major theme is that these organizations are under public pressure. And if I can say Rob Rastusha as an advocate was the one who kept saying to us, you got to look into this because this is why change happens. When advocates pressure hospitals and other organizations viewed as powerful and resource rich and say, hey, you have obligations to be better neighbors. Elected officials regularly ask hospitals and health systems to offset costs of city services. Uh, the advocates are pushing to end untoward debt collection strategies. Uh, sometimes there's litigation involved. When advocates organize and strategize and push, they can really make unbelievable change. And then with the ACA passage 10 years ago, there was a lot of attention about community benefits and a requirement that all hospitals that are nonprofit and therefore tax exempt have to do a so-called community health needs assessment every three years. And many of them are focused on social determinants of health. So if the goal is creating business value, which all companies do on the right, but the aspiration is to create a social value, focusing on shared value sort of hits both major goals. So this is my proposition to you that anchor institutions are perhaps a model of those organizations, whether they're eds or meds or businesses that are really trying to move into creating shared value. They want their businesses to do better in the future, but they know their future is linked to the community in which uh, they are situated. If they help create social value in their community, they get benefit on both sides. So that's why we have been particularly interested in the last several years on bringing the world of private business and public health together. And I just, for those of you who have not heard, we're trying to write about this a little bit. We're, we're trying to uh, do outreach on a culture of health joining private business and, and public health. What does that really mean? Well, uh, our colleague, John Quelch, put forward this very simple, but I think very lovely framework that there are four pillars for a culture of health. And his uh, premise is that every business is a health business whether they realize it or not because every business is impacting on employee health, consumer health, environmental health, and community health. So the anchor institutions fit into the community health pillar in a, in a very, very profound way. So this uh, leads to the next chapter of our Culture of Health grant that we anticipate getting officially funded very, very soon. And we have proposed that we start looking at the concept of anchor businesses in Boston. Are there things called anchor businesses? Can they tackle social determinants of health challenges starting with housing, housing availability and affordability? Can we identify them? 
can we build a typology? Can we do a network analysis and see how they're interacting with other partners in the city? And can we, we measure outcomes? So we have a lot of folks uh, who are interested in this. I have enjoyed preliminary conversations with business leaders saying, what are anchor businesses in, in Boston? One recommendation I got was Logan Airport, which really uh, took me by surprise. But then I thought, oh my goodness, that, that is by definition a business that can't move. I mean, they're, they're based uh, where they are and they, they just can't pick up and go someplace else. Uh, for that airport to thrive, Greater Boston and Massachusetts has to thrive too. So yeah, you know, how, how do we really reach the WHO's aspiration, the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being. You know, so to end where I began, you know, it used to be a very narrow approach. Oh, it's what doctors do in, in hospitals and, and medical clinics, but we're, we're now way, way beyond that. We are working with social determinants. With COVID, we are seeing that everyone can take a major role in control contributing to public health going forward. And I think the anchor institution's theme that has started with EDS and now MEDS, uh, if we continue to explore it and develop it and maybe apply it to the worlds of business going forward and other sectors going forward, I mean, that, that could be a fascinating way for all discussions and research about public health to move forward together.